Hi friends, Krista here. Thank you so much for stopping by Books and Jams. I'm so excited that you stopped by another video today. Today I'm going to be doing another shelf spotlight. I think I skipped doing one in April, but shelf spotlights are just a series of videos where I talk about a different type of book that's on my shelves. It can be something that's on the cover that connects them or a word in the title or any connection that I have with a group of books that are on my shelves. I love doing these spotlights because it always makes me excited to pick up the books that I talk about. Each time I usually have books that I've read that fit that description and also books that are on my TBR that fit that description. And that is the case today. Recently I asked my patrons for ideas for shelf spotlights and let me tell you, you guys came through with some fabulous ideas. I, I'm set now for the next bunch of months. So many great ideas came out of that. And one of those recommendations was to talk about memoirs. And I don't think I've ever done a shelf spotlight specifically talking about nonfiction books. So I thought this would be a great one to do. I don't know why now. I probably could have saved this for nonfiction November. But as I was thinking about it, I just got excited to share about the memoirs that I've read and the ones that are still on my shelf. My understanding of a memoir is that it's almost like an autobiography, except about a smaller part of, of someone's life or an event rather than a person's whole life from beginning to end. I should also say that these lists, these shelf spotlights are not 100% conclusive. I may not always include all of the books on my shelves that fit into a certain theme. Sometimes there's just simply too many, but sometimes I don't know where books are <laughs> that I've read or that I know I own somewhere. Um, and sometimes I just miss some. It's not a conclusive list of the memoirs on my shelves. And also it's not a conclusive list of all the memoirs I've ever read, but these are the ones that are currently on my shelves today, May whatever it is. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to start with the 12 that I've already read. And I'm going to start with my favorite, probably of the whole bunch. <laughs> this was my favorite book a couple years ago, The Sun Does Shine by Anthony Ray Hinton. Anthony Ray Hinton was somebody that was wrongfully convicted of a crime and he spent 30 years on death row. He is a remarkable man, so filled with grace and forgiveness, worked through a lot of anger and bitterness and frustration for sure, but his story is just remarkable. I found it challenging and inspiring and I absolutely, absolutely loved it. And I think it's a book everybody could read and get something out of. It was so good. A book that I read a really long time ago and I didn't have this on my shelves for a long time. And then I found it, I don't know, at a library book sale or I don't even remember where I found it, but I would love to reread this. It's The Hiding Place by Corrie Ten Boom. This is the 35th anniversary edition. Corrie Ten Boom and her family hid some Jewish families during World War II. They lived in the Netherlands. They were Dutch uh, watchmakers, but they got caught and spent time in, in the concentration camps, in Nazi concentration camps. And she lived to tell the tale and she became a great evangelist and just a remarkable woman and a remarkable story. Love The Hiding Place. I need to reread that one soon. One that I read because of booktube is The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. This is not a book I would have ever picked up on my own. It does not appeal to me at all <laughs> just by the cover story, but this tells the story of Jeanette and her family and growing up in poverty and how she overcame a lot of really difficult circumstances. Not physical abuse, but a, some manipulation and emotional abuse from her family. It's just a story of resilience and redemption. I really did like that. I liked that one a lot. Another story of a woman who kind of had to overcome and persevere through some rough up upbringings is educated by Tara Westover. In this story, her family was her parents didn't believe, they kind of wanted to live off the grid. They did not believe in any of social services. They didn't believe in the hospitals or in public schools or in any of that kind of stuff. Tara experienced some abuse from one of her siblings. Her family totally sided with the other siblings. She was not ever publicly educated, not even really homeschooled. I mean, technically they were homeschooled, but the mom never did school with them really. And she, through the library and through other sources that her siblings would help sneak into her, she learned, got her GED, did her best and ended up going to a great college. Um, and just how the importance that she placed on education and how she processes all the all of the stuff that happened to her as a child, as an adult. So I really enjoyed that. I know it has some mixed reviews, but 
I really liked it. Another young woman who really believes in the power of education is Malala. I read I Am Malala by Malala Yousafzai. And this was incredible. This young woman really believed that women should have the right to an education. Um, she grew up in Afghanistan and she was actually shot in the face by the Taliban just because she went to school. And so this is just this, the history of, oh no, Pakistan. I said Afghanistan, it's actually Pakistan. But this is the story of Malala and her dad from a very young age and the importance that he put on education and how he raised his children and the, the love that she had of learning and, and being educated and then the voice that she became for young women around the world. It's just remarkable. She's a remarkable young woman and I really loved learning about Pakistan and the history of the Taliban and it just was very interesting to read. Kind of a mixture of her story and also some history in there. I was lucky enough to meet to meet Jasmine Ward a couple a few years ago. She came, she was a speaker here at our library and I loved learning about her writing process. I had just recently read Sing Unburied Sing and then I bought this one when I was there and it's signed to Krista from Jasmine Ward. She was very um, remarkable woman. I love the I love the word remarkable today. It was very cool to meet her and to hear her talk. This is her memoir of five years of her life when five different men, brothers, cousins, and friends in her life died. The structure of this was a little bit confusing. She kind of works her way backwards to when her brother passes away because that was the first one and the one that was the most impactful for her but it talks about her um, growing up in the south and being black in the south not all of these deaths were murders some of them were some were suicide one was illness i believe but it just talks about the impact that these five men had on her life and it was very emotional and she is a very poetic writer which is not usually a buzzword for me actually that's usually an anti-buzzword but just the way that she writes is incredibly beautiful the structure was just a little bit different and i'm i much prefer a linear structure but i did really appreciate her writing and hearing her thoughts about these five men that impacted her life my first year on booktube one of the projects that i did was i asked 12 other booktubers to recommend a book and each month i would pick one of those books out of a jar this is a book that i read because of that project an invisible thread the true story of an 11 year old panhandler a busy sales exec and an unlikely meeting with destiny by laura Sh Shroff and alex tresniowski this is a story of a, a businesswoman who meets this kid on the street one day, decides to buy him McDonald's, and that sparks a relationship between the two of them that lasts through, for years. And it's their story together. And I never even would have heard of this book had it not been for that project. So thanks, Hope. Good story. The last five of the ones that I've read are middle grade or YA. Some of them kind of cross over that line, middle grade and YA. So the first one is is another World War II Night by Elie Wiesel. Eli, I forget how to pronounce it, but this is his story of being a kid and getting sent to a concentration camp with his father. It is very raw at times. I was frustrated at times, but also could understand his emotion. Not because I've lived through anything like that, but it 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 tracked with the kids that I know. Just being angry with his dad and some of the emotion that he felt, it it was very raw, very well written and a really short little memoir. And I know that this has been required reading for some kids in high school, middle school, I don't know. One that I just read recently is Warriors Don't Cry by Melba Patillo Beals. This is the story of Melba Patillo Beals, who is one of the Little Rock Nine. She is one of the nine black students who entered Little Rock Central High School when schools, the Supreme Court had made a decision that segregation is no longer legal. Well, Arkansas governor and a lot of other people did not feel like they were gonna, they, they decided they were not gonna follow along with that Supreme Court decision. And these nine students went to school and were brutally bullied every day, beyond bullied, abused, threatened, their lives were threatened, their lives were attacked. They had raw eggs thrown at them, they had ink poured on them, they were kicked and like they just were brutalized every single day for the whole school year. I just cannot even fathom. This book made me so angry. But the strength and resilience of these nine students, in particular Melba, because she's telling her story, um, and their families, I just tried to wrap my mind around 
being one of these moms sending their kids to school every day knowing what they were going to face. I tried to imagine being a teacher in that school because where on earth were teachers that were going to stand up for these kids? They were few and far between. It was it was a harrowing story of a true event that happened here in our country. And I highly recommend Warriors Don't Cry. Oh man, it was so good. Amazing. Amazing. One other that I think kind of crosses the line between crosses the line. That sounds negative. Crosses between YA and middle grade is Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. This is a book written in verse and I do believe that it is a middle grade novel but I think that it's also upper middle grade young YA. Uh, this is just her telling stories of growing up in the south and it's so beautifully written. It's almost like little essays in verse rather than one story that runs all the way through. I really loved the writing of this. I, if you listen to it on audio, it's fantastic on audio as well. So that was a really good one. Middle grade brown girl dreaming. Another middle grade that I loved is The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind by William Kemquaba and Brian Mueller. William Kemquaba grew up in a small village in Malawi, Africa, and famine struck his village. And he, man, so cool. He gets books from the library and uses these books to learn how to build a windmill in order to provide his village with electricity. And he does it. He figures it out with books. He has wonderful adults and librarians that help him find, I mean, it's a little tiny village. So he has to like figure out <laughs> how to build this windmill with the resources that they have. And he does it and it's spectacular. And he brings, a, he brings electricity to his, to his village. So cool. He had to drop out of school because of this famine. Wasn't going to let that stop him. And so he was not, could not be stopped. He harnessed the wind changed the lives of his family. Amazing. And finally, the uh, the last one that I've read is Lion, A Long Way Home by Saru Brierly. I first saw the, the movie of this and was captivated, learned that it was a true story, learned that he had written a book, and I thought I was buying the adult version and instead I got the young readers edition, but it doesn't matter. It's a remarkable story of a little boy in India who gets separated from his brother, ends up on a train to Calcutta, has to fend for himself and he's like five, four or five years old. He's very, very young. Ends up being adopted by a family in Australia who always encouraged him to write down any memories, um, especially when he was very young, to draw pictures of things he remembered. Always encouraged him to try to remember his life in India. As he got older and the internet and the World Wide Web became a bigger thing, he ended up using Google Earth to track down the little bits and pieces of his memory that he had and then ultimately to try to track down his family that he was separated from when he was a kid. And it's just such a heartwarming story. There are a, a handful of photos at the back of the book. They're all black and white, but I just love that edition as well. Being able to see the people that are getting talked about in here. Oh, I just love this book so much. And I love, love, love the movie. Huh. So those are the 12 that I have already read. And obviously I can talk about them a little bit more than the next that I have on my shelves because I haven't read these ones yet. So I only know the, a brief idea of what they're about. <laughs> so the first one I have is A Beautiful Work in Progress by Minerva Valerio. I saw a short film about her life one time and she is a, a plus size African American woman who is an ultra runner. She does like 50 mile races. She does all of these marathons. She does not fit the typical, the stereotypical picture of what a runner looks like. And she's like, well, forget it. I'm going to do it anyway. And so this is just the story of how she got into that and her journey from first time racer to ultra marathoner and proves that anyone can become a successful athlete. Love. I feel like I'm going to find that so inspiring as much as I found her five minute short film. Very inspiring. I have Same Kind of Different as Me by Ron Hall and Denver Moore with Lynn Vincent. I feel like this is a book that's been on my shelves and then got unhauled and then is back on my shelves. I believe this is just the story of friendship between a homeless drifter who grew up picking cotton in virtual slavery, an upscale art dealer accustomed to the world of Armani and Chanel, and a gutsy woman with a stubborn dream. So I'm not sure. I think it's just this friendship between these two men in particular, and I'm not sure about the woman and how she is a part of it, but... I feel like this was super popular for a while and I just, I know that there was a film adaptation made of it as well, 
which I have not seen. Another book that I learned about at the very beginning of my booktube days is Juliet's Answer by Glenn Dixon. I heard Brie, she was falling for romance on Instagram. I think she might have changed her channel name, Brie Hill. One Man's Search for Love and the Ex Elusive Cure for heart Heartbreak. And I believe it's about a Canadian teacher who just got broken up with or something. And he travels halfway across the world to Verona, Italy, the ancient home of Shakespeare's most famous romantics, Romeo and Juliet. There he joins a dedicated group of people who answer the thousands of letters addressed to Juliet. So he wanders the streets of Verona and works with these people who answer Juliet's letters. I just think that sounds really interesting. Should have read it in February. It feels like a good book for the month of love. <laughs> I have Little Princes, One Man's Promise to Bring Home the Lost Children of Nepal by Connor Grennan. This one is about a young man who was taking a trek around the world. He started a three month stint volunteering at an orphanage in civil war torn Nepal. But while there, he discovers that many of the kids in this orphanage were not actually orphans, but had been taken from their families. And he begins like the dangerous and harrowing task of returning, trying to match these kids up with the families that they were taken from and returning these kids to their families. I just think that that sounds so good. I feel like that's going to tug at my heartstrings for sure. Oh my word. I have had this for a few years on my shelves, Inheritance, a memoir of genealogy, paternity, and love by Danny Shapiro. It's about a time when Danny sent away her DNA to one of those DNA testing places like 23andMe or, or um, Ancestry.com, whatever, and learns that her biological father is not her father. Like the father that she knows is not her biological father. And what does that mean for her life? Sounded interesting. So I found it at a library sale or something at one point and grabbed it. Um, I do have a couple middle grade, The Boy on the Wooden Box by Leon Layson. This is a Schindler's List story about a boy who was saved because of um, Oscar Schindler. Is that his name? Long Way Gone, The Memoirs of, uh, Memoirs of a Boy Soldier by Ishmael Bey. This is the story of when Ishmael was young. He was running to escape rebels. Um, he, lives in, he lived in Sierra Leone. He was running away from a rebel group got picked up by the government army and forced to become a soldier at 13 years old. He was a very gentle soul and was kind of forced to do things that he never could have imagined. Um, and now he's 26 and telling his story. Amazing. I'm sure there's more to it than that, but I'm very interested. One that's been very popular around here, Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This one just came out a year or two ago, a couple years ago. The Brock Turner case of a young girl who was raped. Emily Doe during the whole case and now she's coming forward to tell her side of the story and I've heard that this is a very powerful and impactful memoir. And finally I have The Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion. This is about when she lost her husband and maybe a child. Several days before Christmas John Gregory Dunn and Joan Didion saw their only daughter Quintana fall ill with what seemed at first like the flu then pneumonia then septic shock. She was put into an induced coma and placed on life support. Days later, the night before New Year's Eve, they were sitting down to dinner after visiting the hospital when John Dunn, the husband, suffered a massive and fatal coronary. In a second, this close, this close partnership of 40 years was over. Four weeks later, the daughter pulled through. Two months after that, she collapsed and underwent brain surgery. Like, this is just the story of this woman and all that she went through in a, in this, in a year's time, losing her husband, her daughter's very serious health situations. I heard that this is just a, a really good look at grief and resilience and fighting through a, just an, an awful year <laughs> of personal um, tragedy and heartbreak. That is my stack of memoirs that I have to share with you today. So I would love to know from you of these that I have not yet read, do you have any that stand out to you, that jump out to you, that you've read and loved, that you want me to read sooner rather than later? Whichever one gets the most comments about it, I'm going to add to my June TBR. I'm gonna say that here. So we have just one more time, The Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion, Know My Name by Chanel Miller, Long Way Gone by Ishmael Bear. Boy on the Wooden Box by Leon, Leon Layson, Inheritance by Danny Shapiro, Lost Princess by Connor Gre um, Grennan, Same Kind of Different as Me by Ron Holland and Vermore, Beautiful Work in Progress by Myrna Valerio, and Juliet's Answer by Glenn Dixon. So of those nine books, let me know, which one do you think I should add to my June TBR? There's just a little glimpse into the memoirs on my shelves. 
I would love to know if you've read a memoir that you've really loved that you would recommend to me. What do you think about nonfiction, about memoirs in general? That is it for today. I would love to chat with you down in the comments about these books that I talked about today or about anything else you would like to chat about. I always love talking with you down in the comments. Thank you so much for taking some time to watch today and hang out with me. I really truly appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for all of your support and encouragement along the way and I look forward to talking with you in another video very soon. Bye!